अखंड मंडलाकारम व्याप्तम ये न चराचरम तत्पदम दर्शितम ये न तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः अज्ञानति मिरांदस्य ज्ञानां जनशलाकया छच्छु मिलितम ये न तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु हो गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा हा गुरुरीव परम ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः स्तावरम जंगमं यातं यत्किं चिसचराचरम तत्पदं दर्शितं येना तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः चिन्मायम् व्यापियत् सर्वम् त्रयलोक्यम् सचराचरम् तत्पदम् दर्शितम् येना श्री गुरवे नमः त्वमेव माता च पिता त्वमेव त्वमेव बंधुस्च सखा त्वमेव त्वमेव विज्ञा द्रविडम् त्वमेव Tvameva sarvam deva deva Tvameva sarvam guru deva deva We are doing Panchadasis, <coughs> second chapter, analyzing the Panchabhutas and using Viveka to discriminate what is ephemeral and what is that which is transcendental. So in that <coughs> Vijaranya analyzes the world experienced through the five senses corresponding to five elements, Sabdasparsa, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, corresponds to Akasha, Vayhu, Agnihi, Apaha, Prithivi. And this forms essentially the five elements. By combination, they form a gross elements and the whole body. And these are part of this, the senses are being perceived, these Sabdasparsa, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, the five properties of the elements are being perceived by five senses and five senses belong to Sushma Sariram and these senses are governed by the mind. The mind is the center and it perceives the information from the senses, integrates and that's how the knowledge takes place. Mind and then the intellect. So there is a cognitive process and there is a recognition process where from the memory whatever is cognized is compared with what you know before and it says yes I know this or I don't know this and so on all the knowledge will take place from that process and objects themselves are as they are and senses bring depending upon their capacity to grasp the properties they bring the information it may be representative of the objects or it may not be complete representative objects depending upon the sense capabilities 
but once the information is brought in it is what the mind sees as object out there but it interprets the objects based on the three gunas sattva rajas tamo gunas so that's what he was analyzing so depending upon the gunas it's going to see what it is not actually what it is but what it thinks it is because it is seeing through the eyes of these gunas and these gunas belong to the the inner instruments antakarnam the property of karana sharira which is essentially the ignorance and that prakruti and prakruti itself has trigunatmakam and depending upon the samskara of the individual either he is sattvic rajasic or tamasic or combination of them depending on the predominance of which guna dictates what kind of perception he is going to have or what kind of interpretation of what he sees is there so those who are having a sattva guna as he analyzed and sattva guna is where prop the promotes the the good qualities and it's essentially trying to see this loka looks like i am in the wrong chapter <laughs> so vairagyam and shantam audaryam ichajyaha sattva sambhavaha so vairagyam is detachment so the is a property of the sattva guna so when you one somebody is detached then that means sattva sattva guna is predominant so what is detachment it's not having attachment that's what is detachment now question is what is attachment attachment is i and i want is the simple definition of attachment that means there is ahankara and a mamakara ahankara means i am this and and this is mine and that is essentially attachment dependence on something other than myself is attachment <coughs> and it dependence on why why do i depend because i think by depending on that i am going to get happiness out of it therefore dependence on something other than myself for my happiness so that is the attachment and this attachment is becomes a problem as we go along but attachment to make things to detach is a different is a different type of attachment a mother or a parents attached to the child but that attachment because the child depends on on the parents so that dependence is there until but that kind of dependence is to make sure that the child becomes independent so that becomes a right attachment where the attachment is provided for the child for its protection for its growth until the child becomes independent of the parents too even after becoming independent if they are still attached then there is a problem <laughs> so the attachment should make one to detach so that's what is the vairagyam here is where i depend on something but also i am independent of it it comes is okay it doesn't if it doesn't come also it's okay too so that is the right attachment that is vairagyam shanti is is forgiveness audaryam is uh, giving freely and icha jaha satya sambhavaha in addition to that satvik guna is propels you to want to learn so if one wants to learn it is the satva guna that really propels and rajo guna kama krodha lobha yatna vichya jaha rajo rajo sthitaha is in the shloka 14 says all kama krodha lobha means the anger all those emotions passions are a property of rajo gunam there are six enemies kama krodha lobha moha madam atsaryas are considered as six enemies and these are properties of so whenever those emotions arise in the mind it is an indication that it is a property of rajas i have raj rajoguna so what should i do convert into sattva guna how do i convert by understanding it 
I say, why am I getting angry with? For whom I am angry with? So you can get angry, but anger should not get you. <laughs> so that I need to get angry appropriately in order for to solve a problem. Just like a parents will get angry with the child when the child is misbehaving, so that child with love only they get angry, so that any anger is only directed to discipline the child so that the child goes in a right, right path. That is, you have to get angry when anger is required, but when the anger itself gets you, that means you are not under your, ang anger is not under your control, then it becomes a problem. That means you become slave to the anger and you lose discrimination and dhyayato vishayan pumsaha sangaste shupajayate sangha sanjayate kamaha. So Krishna gives you good 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 a degradation of a human being how in anger you lose the discrimination whether it's my father, my teacher, my mother and start behaving very badly and that's why pranasyati you go into down the hill. So that is what the essence of the Rajoguna aspects of that is involved. All activities as well as the, uh, the uh, motivation for the activities, karma and all that are property of the Rajoguna. And Tamoguna is essentially Alasyam, says Branti, Tadra, Adi, it means essentially procrastinating things and delusion and sleepiness all the time and lying down, all that is the property of the, the Tamoguna. And the Sattvaguna will make you to acquire the Punyam, merits in the life. So when you perform action with Audariyam, means the very uh, giving type of mentality, where I cannot see others suffering, so I'm ready to give, and that kind of things will earn you merits. Whereas the Rajoguna will, because I and I want, there is a selfishness is involved that will cause you the demerits or papam. And about the Tamoguna, Tamoguna is neither papam nor punyam because you are just lying down, right? So you are not hurting anybody or you are not. If you deliberately lie down when you have, when you know that you have to act, then it's a problem. Then it is also a Tamoguna, a Rajoguna aspect of it. It's a problem also. It's a sin when you're supposed to act and you know you don't act. Like when you go and sleep in the office <laughs> where you're supposed to be being paid, paid for. At the same time, you're supposed to perform action, but you're not doing it. Then that is called Rajoguna. And this Tamoguna will not earn you anything, but he, he says it's a waste of life. Life is provided. Life itself means an action and action is involved, but action itself is Rajoguna, he said, but I had to act as though, but at the same time not act itself. That is what a Sattva Guna does. In other words, while action is going on, I can stand apart and be a witnessing of the action without myself taking the role, I am an actor. That becomes the Jnani's way of looking at it. So this analysis is, is done so that we have the world, we have the senses, we have the mind. Mind cannot do by itself. It needs the senses to interact with the world. So there is external perceptions through the senses. There also, he said, the inner perceptions also can occur through the senses. But I said there are also internal perceptions like I am angry. How do I know? Not by senses because these are emotions, happy, angry, all those passions that arise inside the mind, I also know, and there, there is no sense in put, mind itself knows, because the moods of the mind are noted also. So these are all total perceptions of things. So anything I perceive, either directly or indirectly, is an object. Object means it is I know, because I see. So, knowing, seeing, anything is object and I am a subject. So, there is always a distinction. So, everything in the world that I see is an object. Whether it is a gross object or a subtle object, still it is an object for me. And I am a knower and knower involves a conscious entity. And every object involves an unconscious entity. It is an inner thing and I am a conscious entity 
and this two have to be related to establish I and the world because the world cannot say itself but I have to be a conscious entity has to be there to, to establish the existence of the unconscious entity. Therefore unconscious entities Sattattva means the, the existence depends upon my existence because I say it is. Without me, the world cannot say I am. Therefore, whether the world exists without any conscious entity, conscious of the world, we don't know. Who is going to say? So therefore, it becomes anirvachaniyam. That means it cannot be established either this way or that way. So that is indeterminate problem. So now Vidyaranya having analyzed, he is looking at the sloka of Chandogya Upanishad. Says that which says Tadeva Saumya Idamagramasi Ekameva Advitiyam. Existence alone was there before creation. That is the statement of the scripture. Okay. And what is the nature of the existence? It is ekam eva advitiyam. Three words are used. Ekam means alone. Eva is alone. Advitiyam it is alone only because non-dual. So same meaning as though used but three words are used by the scriptures. And now he is analyzing that statement of the scriptures of the Chandogya Upanishad. This whole chapter is on that Chandogya Upanishad statements and that's what we are analyzing now. So we'll do Sloka 19. Idam sarvam pura srushti Idam sarvam pura srushti Yekame vad viti yakam Yekame vad viti yakam Sade was in nama rupi Sade was in nama rupi Nasta mitcharu nirvajaha Nasta mitcharu nirvajaha Together Idam sarvam pura srushti Yekame vad viti yakam Sade was in nama rupi Nasta mitcharu nirvajaha I think we did this last time so idam sarvam pura srushtehi. So before the srushti, before the creation, he says, what was there? This sarvam pura srushti, all this everything, sarvam is, it includes everything that you can think of or anything that I can think of or thing that I can think of only, I can think of things only. So everything in the whole universe, galaxies, you can include anything that you can think of, any objectifiable thing in the universe. That is sarvam is considered as idam, means this, this, this that I can point out. So pura srushti, what was there? Sat eva, exists existence of sadeva asin, sat eva asin, that means existence alone was there before creation. And it is ekam eva advitiyam, this is all from the scripture, it is ekam eva advitiyam, which means all same, one, non-dual, and alone was there in that. And na asti itya nama rupe, Nasta mitcharu nirvachaha. How about Nama Rupa? How about this world? All it is nothing but names and forms plus existence. So, names and forms, Nama Rupa, na asti, na astam iti arune, arune ruvacha. So, arune he vachaha. So, arune he, arune he means this, the arune, arune, arune he. Arune is the Uddalaka. Uddalaka is a teacher in the Chandogya Upanishad teaching his son Svetaketu and he was instructing this statement. Sadeva Saumya Yadama Gramasi Ekameva Dithiyam. That was a statement by Aruni to his son Svetaketu. So this is a statement by Aruni. So what was that before the creation? There is no names and forms. How do you know? I don't know. Aruni told me that. <laughs> why? Because this is a Veda Pramana. That's why Vedanta becomes a means of knowledge for me to know this. So we'll ask this question later 
very interesting questions come out of it but if right now it is it is attributed to because it is a veda pramana therefore i accept veda statement as true because that's what is apavrushayam it is not given by a human being sir just now you said arune is told arune must be a human being <laughs> these are called veda drashtas veda drashta means this they have to them vedas are revealed and they pass down the knowledge to the to the disciples that's how the vedas are so vedas are told by rishis are called rishis are called veda drashta they are not the one who, who are inventors or discoverers they it's only they claim it is revealed to us just as gravitational force is revealed to newton not that gravitational force not that newton newton claims of course i discovered it but vedic uh, masters never say i discovered it they says it is revealed to me in the seat of meditation it is revealed to me and that's what is called shruti we heard and that was hearing in the meditation so this is aruni what he heard, what he learned he has been passed on to his student and therefore what was the nama roopa names and forms were not there before what was there is one without a second why nama roopa are not there before because ekameva advitiyam the existence was without any distinction of any kind and if there are nama roopa if there are forms and names and the right is are there before if there were there before also then one could distinguish there there means within the existence i can separate this is different that is different that is different and so on therefore those distinctions were not there and that was a statement ekameva advitiyam therefore in that existence that was there pura srushtehi before creation therefore there no distinctions of any kind therefore nama roopa or which are properties that provide us the distinctions also cannot be there as per Mr. or Sri Aruni. Now he is going to analyze these three words: ekam, eva, advitiyam. What exactly they mean? So in the three in the slokas next. Urchasya swagato bheda, urchasya swagato bheda, patra pushpa paladi bhihi, patra pushpa paladi bhihi, urchan taras sajatiya, urchan taras sajatiya, vijatiya siladi bhihi, vijatiya siladi bhihi. Together. वृक्षस्य स्वगतो भेदः पत्रपुष्पपलादिभिः वृक्षान्तरासजातीयम् विजातीयसिलादिभिः ओ यू गाइस आर सीइंग समथिंग डिफरेंट सिलादिता व्हेन दिस वन सिलादिभिः दे मे बी डिफरेंट हां या ओके I have here siladi bihi. Ruchasya swagato beda ha. Patra pushpa paladi bihi. Ruchantra sajati yaha vijati yaha siladi bihi. So here first he is defining what is sajati, what is the swagata, sajati and vijati bedas. So three kinds of differences can exist. and in the three kinds of differences the first kind is so ekam eva advitiyam those are the three words so ekam in that order ekam corresponds to the the swagata beda so what is swagata beda he is giving an example here rukshasya swagato beda ha patra pushpa paladevihi in the case of a tree take an example of a tree so there is only one tree So I am taking one tree. In that there is a patram, pushpam, pala, etc., etc. Are there? Patram is leaves, and pushpam is flowers. Patr, the palam is fruits. So there are varieties of differences are there. Branches are there, and you can think of all other things. The roots are there. Everything is different, but only one total. But in one there are differences. 
So one constituting of many things together is a tree. Right? So that's called Sogata Veda. In the same one, in from internal differences exist within itself. That's called Sogata Veda. Ukshantara Sadatiha. Now you take this tree and another tree and another tree. So now there are varieties and varieties of tree, the apple tree and banyan tree and this tree, variety of tree. Each flowers are different, each roots are different, everything is different for each one. And therefore there is a difference between one tree and another tree. Even though in one tree there are Svagata Vedas, between the trues there are differences of the trees also. So they are called Sajati, same Jati, same, same trees, all are trees only, but there are differences between the trees also. So if there are many of the same type, each one is different from the other. That's what is the, the Swagata, Swajati Veda. Vijati Yaha Siladi Bihi. Now he's defining the Vijati Veda. Vijati Veda is that where the trees are different from stones. He's giving an example of a stone. Tree is alive and he, it has a patram, pushpam, palam, all that are there. At the same time, a tree which is inert thing is different from a tree jati. It's not another tree, but it's a completely different group. So I can have different the stones also, different types of stones I can think of. But these stones, jati is one, what are different from tree jatis, right? Like that each one is. So we have Swagata Beda, Sajati Beda, and Vijati Beda. And these are the three orders that Ekam, Eva, Advitiyam corresponds to these three in that order. He's going to say that. So he has, in this sloka, he has defined what is Sajati, what is the Swagata Veda, what is Sajati Veda, and what is Vijati Veda. Now he applies that to Sat. Tatha Sadvastu no Veda, Tatha Sadvastu no Veda, Trayam Prapyam Nivaryate, Trayam prapyam nivaryati aikya vadharana dvaita aikya vadharana dvaita pratishedha istri vikramat pratishedha istri vikramat Together, tatha sadvastu no bheda trayam prapya nivaryati Aikya Vadharana Dvaita Pratishedhai Stribhi Kramat. Okay. Pratishedhai Stribhi Kramat. So, Tatha, in the same way, in the same way as what? In the same way as previous mentioned, there are no Swagata Veda, there is no Sajati Veda, there is no Vijati Veda in Sat in the existence. So, let's apply what, say existence cannot have Swagata Veda. Swagata Veda means internal differences. Just as the tree has internal differences, the tree has, the, the leaves are different, flowers are different, fruits are different. In the existence that was there before, there cannot be internal divisions as constituting together as one each one being different inside. So that kind of cannot be there because one existence, suppose it is there. So why, why now, how do you say that? Suppose this exists and that exists, what is the difference from this existence and that existence? In the existence itself cannot be any, 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 any kind at all. And after that only Nama Rupa came, creation came afterwards. So there's no Nama Rupa type. Nama means names and forms and all that distinctions are not there. Therefore, it is Sat is infinite. Infinite, you cannot have parts. By definition, infinity is that which cannot have parts. Why? Because it's infinite. <laughs> because only finites can have a part. So finite, finite plus can be infinite? No. Finite plus finite plus finite can only be finite. It cannot be made into infinite. So infinite cannot be an assemblage of finite things. Okay, that's mathematically easy. So sada, sadvastuno. 
सदा वस्तु भेद भेद दिस् थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ डिफरेंस प्राप्यम निवार्य सो द पॉसिबिलिटी हेज बीन डिस्मिस् इन दैट बै यूजिंग एक अद्वितीय स्टेटमेंट बै दि स्क्रिप्चर्स ईक्य अवधारणाद्वैत प्रतिषेद हि त्रिभि क्रम सो क्रम इन दट आर्डर निवार्य डिस्म प्रतिषेद हि त्रिभि बै अनालिस आफ् थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप सो सपोज नेक्स्ट वी टेक् वी सेट दे कैन नाट बी इंटर्नल डिफरेंस राइट इंटर्नल डिफरेंस विथ इन दिस वै कैंट वी हेव ए सजाति भेद सजाति भेद मीन लाइक ए ट्री दिस ट्री अनदर ट्री अनदर ट्री right so we have one kind of existence so another kind of existence and third kind of existence why can't we have right okay let's say we have we have one kind of existence and other kind of existence so what is the distance between the two what's what is that separating these two if there is a separating does it exist or not if that is also existing then what is the what is the third you have now one two and then in between also existence is there difference in the existence of each one of them there has to be something to differentiate this existence and that existence and then connecting existence also so therefore there cannot be any sajati aspects of it so so you cannot divide that infinity in essentially and therefore and also we cannot have vijati is going to talk about it vijati in more detail so we can postpone that so you cannot have sajati vijati swagata bedas so aikya avadharana advaita pratishedahi trivikramat so this the the no difference avadharanam and ekam Well, there is only one, and no difference of any kind has been established. So, if there is, all the differences have been, you know, that they have been dismissed by analogy. By analogy with the previous tree, he took a tree, and also he took stones, right? So, a different jati. And he is going to justify that conclusion in the next few slokas. why he is going in such exhaustive de- details only because different philosophers put forth a different way of explaining the same thing that's the reason why and we'll see later about it is so sato na navaya vaha sankhya sato navaya va सतो न अवयवा संख्या सतो न अवयवा संख्या संख्या तदम सूपण सो सतः इन दट सत न अवयवा देर आर नो पार्ट्स इन दट एक्सिस्टेंस बिकॉज एक्सिस्टेंस कैन नॉट हैव एनी पार्ट्स सो दिस इज अ पिक्युलर स्टेटमेंट सो इज बिकॉज एक्सिस्टेंस अलोन वॉज देयर एंड इट हैज टू बी इन फाइनेट बिकॉज इफ इट इज इन नॉट इफ इट इज फाइनेट देन वील आस्को वॉट इज देर ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ द फाइनेट does it exist if we say because other side is right when the other side is that means other side exists if the other side is exists that means it's a part of the existence only so existence has to be infinite so sataha na avayavaha so no avayaha is limbs or parts and na means it cannot be sankhyaha there cannot be any doubt that there are there can be parts in this sat so it is 
it, we can dismiss completely. There cannot be any doubt, any possibility of a partitioning the Sat into this part, this part, this part, this part. Like infinite is being partitioned. So it cannot have any Avayavaha. Tat Tadam Sasya Nirupanath. So Tat Tad amsasya nirupanat. So that amsha is the the parts and that cannot be established is na na nirupanat is established. So the part can there cannot be any parts in Brahman has been established. Nama rupe na tasya amshau tayohu tayohu ajyapi ajyapi anudbhavat. So, nama rupa tasya amshahu tayo ajyapi anudbhavat. So, the, before the creation, nama rupa names and forms that are created out of the universe. So, the creation is nothing but name, forming names and forms. That is akasha, vayu, agnihi, apaha. All are, we are giving a name to a form. Form means attribute. Sabdasparsa, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, all those attributes are there. So, all Arthayohu, see, that were not there before creation, because scripture says so. There was nothing other than existence alone, and it later became many. So, creation involves that pure existence becoming into many is the creation. Many involves names and forms. So, those names and forms were not there before the creation. Only saying the same thing in an in a <laughs> exhaustive way. <coughs> because he is going exhaustively this analysis of the same. Nama rupo dhavas yaiva. Nama rupo dhavas yaiva. Sushtitva sushtita pura. Sushtitva sushtita pura. Natayo rudbhavas tasma. So he's establishing the same fact. Nama Rupaha Udbhavati Eva Sushtitvan. So Srishti is creation is nothing but the creation of names and forms in whatever that was there before. That was the statement. So, Sushitaha Pura, before creation, there cannot be names and forms also. So, Natayo Udhavaha Tasmat Niramsaha Sat Yatha Vyathu. So, therefore, any kinds of Nama Rupa, Nama means name. This is different, that is different. We have now all the Sajati, Vijati, Swagata, Vedas are there in the creation, in the names and forms. We have tables, we have chairs, we have trees, we have stones, all that are within the creation only. And these creations have, this creation has both Sajati, Vijati, Swagata, Vedas are there. But they were not there before creation, because before the creation there are no names and forms. So, Niramsham Sat Yathaviyato. He gives an example, just as the space cannot have any divisions. So, before the creation, what was there? S atma was there. And from that Atma, Akasha is born, right? Space is born. In that space, there are no divisions of any kind, right? Space cannot have any divisions of any kind. So, in the same way, because space is subtle and we can see that space cannot have divisions, we cannot divide the space because even the dividers are in the space only and therefore that which came before even Akasha, that should be subtler than the Akasha, therefore you cannot have any qualities or name, at least Akasha has a name that is also not there and form is not there. Therefore, near Amsham, that has no Amsham, no parts in that Sat which was there and all things only Sushtitva, only cre after creation only Nama Rupa came. Okay. Now creation and the Nama Rupa come. Sadantaram sajatiyam 
तरन सजातीय न वैलक्षण्य वर्णन वर्णना न वैलक्षण्य वर्णना नाम रूपोदिभेद विना नैव सतो सदंतर स जातीय न वैलक्षण्य वर्णना नाम रूपोदिभेद विना नैव सतो so after creation what happened let's ask a question then what happened after creation after creation sad antaram sajatiyam all these different of sajati vijati vedas are created as names and forms are formed along with and vilakshyam all that is different types of varieties are are possible so he himself became many so the scripture says what was there before it says existence alone was there before then what happened tad aichada is how the scripture starts what was there before existence alone was there it is one without a second then he decided how did he decide tad aichada it saw so how can you see anything there is nothing to see right other than itself so that means it is self conscious entity so it is when con- self consciousness is not conscious of anything else is there because there nothing else is there so it is a conscious entity so what was there before existence alone was there before and it is of the nature of consciousness now the question are there two things the existence and the consciousness are there two things now <laughs> some some philosophers say yes there are in that pure existence there are th- internal divisions now you say what is the internal division there are internal divisions where some are conscious entity and there are some unconscious entities are there in that total in that conscious entity there is a further division one is jiva consciousness and another is lord paramatma consciousness so now you have internal divisions within the existence that was there before and this is a bhagwan ramanujas vishishta advaita by the way so my wife likes that by the way <laughs> so in the in the internal divisions there are one total and that's what you see in the 11th chapter of gita the one chapter in the virat swarupa lord is there at the same time everybody is there in that right where you see different things are there the gods one side and the devils one side and all that everything that means gods are different from devils right but total is one now you follow how it comes a total is one of that existence which is brahman and there are internal differences of that lord which is pervading the total that is paramatma the lord who is so that is one atma that pervades the entire so he pervades everywhere according to them also he is paramatma he is omnipresent that says i am pervading all my body right finger everything all the way so so finger also i am there <laughs> i am pervading in that but if something is wrong with the finger i can cut it off amputate the finger and still i am there that means i am not the finger but finger is part of me follow it one so exactly identical model is used that's what is called the uh, organic relation they're called like an organ related to the total is an organic relation with the total this is the philosophy of isista dvaita by the way so therefore he is the vijaranya comes uh, in the 15th century so ramanuja came between 3rd 12th and 13th century so shankara came in the 8th 9th century so advaita before the godapada is much before advaita what shankara propagated and later came ramanuja denouncing the the advaita proposing the vishishta advaita then there are lot of tug of wars and uh, people will say no you are right i am right all this so vidyaranya is taking up some of the objections raised by ramanuja against advaita and objecting their own philosophy this goes on even now goes on <laughs> so objections counter objections objections counter objections by reading all that 
what is what will it do we will become educated <laughs> you need to read it say so when you look at the other people say when you read the objections say my god that is true <laughs> Yeah. when they are objecting yeah. then you have to read the counter counter objection says why that is not true says yeah yeah this is true how come i didn't think of it <laughs> so that's how our knowledge becomes that's what is called mananam mananam is required so in this also in the philosophers the way we, they project the counter objection and then dismiss the objection also that's what is the whole our methodology of teaching also so here is saying that sat antaram sajatiyam internal differences in the sat itself na vailakshyam varnana varnanat though say there cannot be any vailakshyam if there are internal differences then i have to describe how this one is different from that one and this is different from that one so ramana the difference is 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 called chit and achit are there in the two conscious entities unconscious entities he differentiates why on the basis of consciousness which implies that in the total there is a conscious entities there are unconscious entities but here scripture says what was there before was existence alone was there and it says tad icha ta itsa now one without a second it cannot see anything other than itself therefore it means it is self conscious entity and then it says says bahushyam i want to become many so a desire rose in that totality because i want to become many It means wanting is a desiring i want to become many tad ichata bahushyam praja e eti it became many so therefore what became many it itself became many so that's what the creation is so how does ramanuja explain that exactly same way that was there is total in a subtle form in the total there are there internally present because these are very deep analysis says that was there as though it is total in which there are conscious entities and unconscious entities and it became grossification and that's what is the creation it becomes many that you can distinguish as nama roopa <coughs> looks logical <laughs> not logical <laughs> so that's how he explains so what's wrong with that there are a lot of long things say there how does advaita explain this just for you know you think advaita is correct but now think about it also <laughs> what was there before is existence alone was there then how does it create I want to become many. How does the desire come in that existence? Because now you are having a desire in it, and how does it come? And how does it create into many, many varieties? Right? Many varieties is there. Was there to def- to create of this? Was there something in that total that prompted to become many like this, not the other way? Follow the question. And what is it? When it is becoming into many, then it will become many, many like what? Many like this, like this. Why like this, like this? Not why like other thing like that? If you ask, so there must be something in that sat which is prompting to become like this, like this only, right? That means there has to be some samskara, some vasanas are there that was there which is expressing now in this form. said just now you told me there is nothing in that it is pure existence and uh, non differentiate now you are trying to differentiate you follow the problem no? he is also saying you are differentiating now so objection now say you are also trying to create something he is not creating any ra- randomly you creating something based on some information that was stored in that sat that information stored means information is different from the where it is stored there is some difference in that also that's why it is able to differentiate in the projection into something so these are called khyativadas khyativadas means we is there satkaryavada satkaryavada anirvachaniyavada and all this comes into this and so exhaustive analysis of the tarkika goes on but just to give you an idea 
This is what was there before is only scriptural statement as Sadeva Soumya Idamagramasi. Because what is before? Before creation. But when did the creation start? That's what you're saying. Before creation, there was existence alone was there. But when was the creation? You cannot answer because it is anadi. Anadi means it is beginningless. So, ignorance, because ignorance is the cause for creation. So, who has the ignorance? Sat has ignorance. Sat, oh no, we don't want Brahman to have ignorance. So, where is this ignorance? So, this is a problem. That's what the whole Ramanuja criticizes Advaita on there are some seven untenables against the avidya of Advaita Vedanta. Seven comments are made in his in his Bhashya, the Sri Bhashya. Sri Bhashya is the Ramanuja's the interpretation of the Brahma Sutras in that he takes Advaita position and says what's wrong with it. And he proposes seven problems in that, in the so-called ignorance. But Ramanuja said, does he have also, no, not, does he, not does he have ignorance, he also has ignorance, <laughs> the basis, but his ignorance is different type. So he only criticizes Advaitic interpretation of what ignorance is. But these are very, very mind-boggling discussions. But essentially what Im implies is the creation is beginningless. That means what was there before creation is only scriptural statement because the before creation itself is, statement before itself is a problem because it is beginningless. So what can I say is only once the creation cycle started, then we can talk about all these statements of what was there is the vasanas in a subtler form which are not distinguishable as sajata vijata svagata vedas in that at the same time is projected into many as a grossification so that becomes laya sir you want to use any theory that you want that is convenient for you is there any proof for this? This is exactly what you do when you go to deep sleep state. When I go to deep sleep state, what happens? The same happens when I am in the deep sleep state, that's called laya. In the laya, all sajati, vijati, swagata, bedas are dissolved into non-distinguishable of any kind. You may be knowing chemistry, you may be knowing physics, you may be knowing biology, but when you go to deep sleep state, no distinction of biology versus chemistry versus any of this kind. And therefore, what they're not there? It is there, but not there. Why? Because it is there in a such, such a subtler form that you cannot distinguish. At the same time, it projects back when you get up in the morning. So chemistry has just like chemistry. There is no confusion between chemistry and biology. You won't suddenly become astronomer <laughs> or astrology. Only if you know chemistry, only you know chemistry only. No confusion of any kind because that's exactly what. So this is happens at an individual level called layam. Same thing happens at collective level called pralayam. Problem is the global where Brahmaji was picturized as Brahmaji is going to sleep and when he goes to sleep everything goes back into him in a subtler form and when he gets up again after his sleep and he projects it again and the whole creation how does he project just as I project in the morning all the problems that I have exactly identical, nothing has been solved in the night when I am sleeping. Same financial problem, same problem with the wife or a husband or same, everything exactly identical because when I went to sleep it was there but it came back again. So identical creation came back but in the layam or in the pralayam there are no distinctions of any kind. So we have to understand here the what was there before creation is 
pure existence, but pure existence is only from the scriptural point because the creation is a cyclic phenomena and therefore it cannot be applied to what was there before creation started. It can be applied only once it is a cycle. So that's what essentially one has to be clear in terms of how we distinguish. Okay. Now it says Nama Rupa Ibedam Vina Naiva Sato Vida. So in the the in the there is no difference in the sat of any names and forms, but it's in the in the creation cycle it is provided in the in the subtlest form which is grossified when it became many. So just as in the deep sleep state, we do not have any distinguishing uh, distinction of Sagata, Sajati, Vijati, Vedas are not there. All differences of kind are not there. But yet it is there in a potential form. So there are different theories of creation. I don't know that the difference of, difference of creation and some people say what was there, nothing was there and it is created. He's going to talk about that also in the scripture. But not only the the the, the Vijnanavadins say it, but there is a Nayaikas also say what was there, it is creation out of nothing. How can that be? That is violation of conservation. He says, then he will ask question, if it is already there, then why should it create again? What was there? Pot is not there. Pot is created. If it is already there, then what is their creation? Because pot is not there, now you are creating. Therefore, what was there? There is no pot, there is no creation. So that's like there is no creation before, it is created. That is called Asat Karavad. So he says, no, 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 you cannot create out of nothing. There has to be something. If it is already something, then what is their creation? There is a something in a potential form, but that got created. So a goldsmith, he has already an imagination of what he is going to create and it expresses itself in the form of a necklace, a ring and a bangle. So what was there before? An idea or a thought or a construction in the brain, what is going to be created? It is already there, the seeds are there, it expresses itself in that form. He, may, he can modify as he is creating, that is a separate issue, but that is a part of the, the uh, creation as Satkarya Vada. So he says, that fellow, other fellow obviously will object, you know, so how can it be? Then as he says, what kind of difference, then there are the differences. So it is, you are only looking at ontologically at a different levels of reality. That is where the Advaita comes into picture. What was there true was the potential form, but is there Advaita now? There are two. One is that which is pure existence and this which is different names and forms in a potential form. So no, it is still one because the other one does not count. Why? Just as what is there is only gold, if I say, say, oh no, the ring is there, bangle is there, necklace is there, they don't count because they are only Nama Rupa only. They have no validity at that higher level of reality. So, from the point of the absolute reality, existence alone was there without any distinctions. So, all these are discussions are there in the the scriptural analysis. So here, the Vidyaranya is only bringing out some aspects of it in that sense. So here we have to look at from the Advaitic point, even though after creation also what is there is only existence. Because it is a higher order of reality, it never really creates. Because if I say what was there before is existence alone, which is infinite, but infinite cannot create. Why? Infi creation involves a modification and therefore infinite cannot undergo any modification. Therefore, there is no really creation. But I am seeing it. That's a problem. What you are seeing is only names and forms, just as gold has not really undergone any real transformation. Gold still remains as a gold only, but yet there are varieties of names and forms. 
But is a ring really created? If you ask gold, hey, when did you become a ring? He said, I never became a ring. I am only gold. You are calling me in this form as a ring. That's your problem. You are making a distinction because you are trying to differentiate a ring from a bangle because you want a ring and not a bangle. But from gold point, there is no distinctions of any kind. It is pure gold only. You can chemically test it. It's AU only. <laughs> Whatever you do, it only shows the properties of the gold, not properties of the ring. Ring has properties of what? ID, OD and all that. Those do not belong to the gold. Right? So, one has to look at this, understand this, that's why it's called Viveka, where I have to use the discrimination of Nama Rupa and the one that pervades the Nama Rupa, which doesn't have any Nama Rupa. Nama Rupa means names and forms. That means that pure existence still exists, that is Brahman exists in varieties of forms, but while seeing forms, I am seeing varieties also. That Viveka is what is being discussed here. Now we'll stop with this time. We'll do Purnamada Purnamida. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiva Basishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Guru Kyo Namaha Harihi Om